Hey everybody, today we're getting into partial fractions. In this video, we're going to tackle the case where the denominator can be factored entirely into a product of linear terms. We'll get into the more complicated case where there are irreducible quadratics in the denominator in the next video. Big picture, partial fractions is a method for writing complicated rational functions, which are one polynomial divided by another, as sums of simpler rational functions. Here's an example of what I mean. 2x plus 16 over x squared plus x minus 6. Or to write it slightly differently, 2x plus 16 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. The denominator here is quadratic, but we'd like to write it as a sum of rational functions whose denominators are linear, first degree rather than second. This can be done um, for if we pick the right a and b values. This is nice because in Calculus 2 we frequently need to integrate rational functions um, and the things that we have here are going to be easier to integrate. The expression that we have um, on the second line is easier than the one on the top. Similarly in differential equations when we're working with a Laplace transform, functions of the form below are much easier to deal with than the functions of the form above. So the procedure is kind of always the same. Once you know the form for your partial defunct partial fractions decomposition, you're going to want to get a common denominator there on the right. Once you have the same numerator on the left and right, you're going to be able to equate the numerators and hopefully solve for a and b. So let's go ahead and do it in this example. Uh, here we end up getting a times x minus 2 plus b times x plus 3 all over x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now the denominators are the same, so the numerators have to be the same. There are at least two ways that we can solve this. First of all, we can recognize that both sides are polynomials in x, and polynomials can only be equal if the coefficients of all the different powers of x are the same. So here the linear terms have to match up, and the x terms have to match up. If there were x squared terms, those would have to be equal on the left and right. Same thing with x cubed, and so on. So if we just look at the x terms here, on the left I have 2x, on the right I have ax plus bx. So 2 has to equal a plus b in order for the coefficient of x to be the same on the left and the right. Similarly, the constant terms have to be equal. So 16 has to equal negative 2a plus 3b. We now have two equations in two unknowns, a and b. And we can solve this system simultaneously by using, for example, the substitution method or the addition method. Here's that system written in a slightly neater way. Let's go ahead and use the addition method on this. We'll multiply the first line by 2 to get 4 equals 2a plus 2b, and then add it to the second. We get 20 equals 5b, so b is 4. Substituting b equals 4 into either one of those equations, I can then get a equals negative 2. Once I have a and b, I plug those back into our original um, partial fractions decomposition, a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 2, um, to get the final answer, negative 2 over x plus 3 plus 4 over x minus 2. You should check that if you get a common denominator there in that last line, the negative 2 over x plus 3, blah, 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 you actually get back what you started with, the 2x plus 16 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. Essentially what we're doing here is reversing the process that we use when we add fractions that have unlike denominators. Starting with something with a common denominator, getting back a sum of two things that do not have a common denominator. Let's generalize this a little bit. Suppose we have a rational function, one polynomial over another, where the denominator can be factored as a product of distinct linear terms. a1x plus b1, times a2x plus b2, and so on. If the polynomial on top has a lower degree than the polynomial on the bottom, then the exact process that we just did is going to work. The form of the decomposition that you're going to be looking for is like this. a1 over the first linear term, plus a2 over the second linear term, and so on. Here the capital a1 is different from the small a1, different coefficients. 
This notation, by the way, is pretty much traditional. It doesn't really necessarily matter what names you give those coefficients. I think in this case, as in many cases in, in pre-calculus and calculus, the formula is harder than the, the process itself. So let's go through another full example, and hopefully it'll become even clearer. Let's look at 2x squared plus 14x minus 8 over x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. Here, by the way, I've done you the favor of giving you a problem where the denominator is already factored. If the denominator is just a random polynomial, you have to actually do that work yourself and factor it out before you can do the partial fractions. So the form of the partial fractions decomposition is going to be this. Constant over x minus 1 plus another constant over x plus 1 plus another constant over x plus 3. So one term for each one of those linear factors in the denominator. Okay, so now I do the same thing as before. I get a common denominator. The first term, a over x minus 1, needs to be multiplied by x plus 1 times x plus 3 over x plus 1 times x plus 3, and so on. Now, um, since I have a common denominator there on the expression I have and the one I started with, I can just equate it with, I can equate the numerators. Overall, here's what I get. Now, I could just FOIL all this out so that the x squared terms equal, the x terms equal, and the constant terms equal to get three equations with three unknowns, a, b, and c. That would work. However, in this case, there's um, a good shortcut that is useful in a great many instances, and I want to make sure we point it out. Namely, here I have these two polynomials on the left and right that are supposed to be equal and therefore they're supposed to be equal for every single value of x. We can plug in any value of x that we like on both sides and still get an equality for um, the correct a, b, and c. So let's pick some nice values of x and plug them in. In particular, if I try x equals negative 3, or x equals negative 1, or x equals 1, I'm going to get a lot of cancellation. For instance, when x is negative 3, plugging that in on the left, and the right, I get the um, a and b terms on the right to cancel. Overall, I'm just left with the c term, and then I can solve for just that single variable very easily, just using a little arithmetic. I get c equals negative 4. Similarly, when I plug in x equals negative 1, the a and c terms on the right go away. A little bit of simplification then gives me b equals 5. Finally, when x equals 1, only the a term survives on the right. Doing a little simplification, I get a equals 1. Now I can go back to my original partial fractions decomposition, plug in 1 for a, 5 for b, and negative 4 for c to get a final answer on this. There's, a, there's two different things that, uh, that can go wrong with this process, at least as we know it so far. First of all, we could have a repeated linear factor in the denominator. So maybe instead of x minus 1 here, I would have x minus 1 squared. Um, so we have to learn how to deal with that. Second, we could have a situation where the denominator doesn't factor all the way to, to, into linear factors. For example, we could have an irreducible quadratic down there. We're going to deal with that situation separately in the next video, so we won't talk about it here. Here's another example um, of the first thing that can go wrong, where we get a repeated linear factor. 7 minus 2x over x squared minus 4x plus 4 has a denominator that factors to x minus 2 squared. So it's x minus 2 times x minus 2. Our old technique won't work. a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 2 would immediately simplify to a plus b over x minus 2 and we won't be able to make any progress. So what should we do instead? Here's the solution. We'll view the denominator x minus 2 squared as having sort of two components, x minus 2 and x minus 2 squared, and break up our original fraction with this decomposition. Now I'm going to proceed exactly as before. I'm going to get a common denominator and then equate the numerators. So a times x minus 2 plus b has to equal 7 minus 2x. 
Expanding that out a little bit, distributing out the a through, or distrib distributing the a through, I get this. The x terms have to match up, so ax equals negative 2x, so a is negative 2. And the constant terms have to match up, so negative 2a plus b equals 7. Plugging in a equals negative 2 there, I very quickly get b equals 3. So 7 minus 2x over x minus 2 squared is negative 2 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x minus 2 squared. Let's try and generalize what we just did. The, if you have a situation where you have a rational function where the denominator is a power of a linear term, ax plus b, you break it down like this. A constant over the linear term plus a different constant times that linear term squared and so on. You keep counting up the exponent in the denominator until you get to your original exponent. In this case, it really is the numerator that's getting simpler here. The numerator is always a constant. The denominator's powers go from 1 all the way up to the, the power that you started with. So let's do an example or two where we just get the form of a partial fractions decomposition. 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 1 over 2x minus 1 to the fourth. So following the prescription that I've got right above, I get a1 over 2x minus 1 plus a2 over 2x minus 1 squared, a3 over 2x minus 1 cubed plus a4 over 2x minus 1 to the fourth. Pretty clear? I hope so. One last problem. Again, let's just get the form of the decomposition and not actually go through and actually find all the coefficients. So I've got an x squared term, so I need um, two sum ends for that. I need a constant over x and a constant over x squared. I have one x plus 4 term, so I just need a constant over x plus 4, a single term there. And then I have x minus 7 to the third, so I th need three terms for that. Constant over x minus 7, another constant over x minus 7 squared, and another constant over x minus 7 to the third power. One last example, x to the third over x times x minus 4 to the fifth. So constant over x, and then I need five terms for the x minus 4 to the fifth. With denominators, x minus 4, x minus 4 squared, x minus 4 cubed, and so on. In each of these cases, actually computing this coefficients is going to be a royal pain in the butt. Usually we do it with technology. It's important, however, to be able to recognize these forms so that you know what you're getting into before you start.